Hello there everybody, it is me Feaser Bunny and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So today we're building a Heartstopper inspired family home. This is a London Semi, also known as a semi-detached home. It's got three bedrooms, one and a half bathrooms and of course the ever iconic modern extension which is definitely a thing I see a lot of in a lot of British homes but yeah I'm really really excited to talk about Heartstopper with you guys because Heartstopper hands down one of my favorite teen dramas of all time I absolutely love it it is so beautiful so wholesome and I don't know, my heart just skips a beat every time I think about it. I'm still not over it even though it's been out for like a month now and I urgently need Netflix to announce a second season because I'm literally going to be rioting outside of Netflix headquarters. I don't even know where that is, but they need to announce season 2 ASAP. If you haven't seen it yet, highly recommend. Just check it out. It's such a good time. So wholesome, so beautiful. And the characters, the casts, everything is just perfect. It's definitely one of my favorite BLs, if it's even considered a BL. And yeah, definitely one of the best Western kind of like LGBT TV shows, I guess. Is it even a TV show? Web series? I don't know. The closest thing I can compare it to would probably be Love, Simon or like Love, Victor because it does have that more lighthearted vibes but it's also really different because Heartstopper is definitely more wholesome in my opinion and I don't know why but for some reason the success of Heartstopper on Netflix also made Young Royals trending again which is so awesome because I really really enjoyed Young Royals as well. I talked about it in some of my builds last year actually and yeah I think this was actually my first like Scandinavian series that I've seen so yeah I did actually watch it um, subbed not dubbed and yeah it was really really good definitely a lot more serious compared to Heartstopper but but still really really well done as well. I love how Netflix is definitely the pioneer you know, platform for LGBT representation. I'm so, so happy. Teenagers nowadays are so lucky because in my generation, we barely got any LGBT representation. And if we had any, it was a lot of, you know, negative stereotypes, which I'm not gonna get into because I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard a lot about it anyway. But yeah, this build is inspired by Charlie's house in Heartstopper. Um, we don't actually get to see much of their houses in Heartstopper. I mean, we see a lot of their bedrooms, which is where a lot of, you know, intimate moments happen. I don't know, intimate sounds weird, but, you know, a lot of, you know, wholesome, fun moments and character developments happen in their bedroom, but the houses themselves, we don't actually get to see a lot of. I do know for a fact that um, the characters in Heartstopper are more of uh, working class, and apparently there's some differences when it comes to the live action adaptation because i feel like it made them seem more middle class if i'm not mistaken i don't know just judging based off of what i've heard through the grapevine on social media because i actually haven't read the comics myself even though i am planning to get it at some point eventually maybe when volume 5 comes out because i know that's the last volume or maybe i should already get it i'm secretly hoping for like a box set because I am a sucker for those. I just I just really really like box sets and hopefully they give us like bonus content as well. But right now I just really want a follow up for the TV show because I just want to see more of Kit Connor and Joe Locke because they are just perfectly cast as Nick and Charlie. I couldn't think of a better couple. Can you guys think of? I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, But yeah, this is the modern extension. Um, I have to give props to some of my British friends for introducing me to this concept. I'm looking at you, hey Harry. Um, yeah, this is definitely a thing I noticed a lot of British homes have. And I have actually been watching quite a lot of British drama. Maybe it's because of the Heartstopper effect, I don't know. 
Actually, no, I don't think so, because before Heartstopper actually did watch Anatomy of a Scandal, absolutely brilliant. It's completely different from Heartstopper, of course, because Anatomy of a Scandal is more of a serious drama, but you know, it's got Michelle Dockery in it, and I love her from Downton Abbey, so really, really love that. I don't really watch a lot of like contemporary dramas, and I feel like that's gonna change. I need suggestions from you guys, most definitely, because I'm more used to watching period dramas. And actually, speaking of that, who's excited for the Downton Abbey movie? Or the second Downton Abbey movie? I am so excited because it's going to take place in the Mediterranean. And it's a you know location that we've never really seen before in Downton. So I'm really, really excited about it. And I hope the story is better because... Honestly, the first movie was kind of okay, nothing too spectacular, but I'm really looking forward to some better storylines and maybe hopefully some more character development in the second movie. I don't know what they're gonna do with Maggie Smith actually, because she is, you know, getting a bit up in years, so I don't know if she's still gonna be continuously appearing in the follow-ups. Hopefully there's gonna be a follow-up, but yeah, if you don't know, Downton is like my favorite, favorite period drama. Probably The Crown would be a close second and in third place is a drama that I don't think I've actually talked about yet on the channel and that is Anne with an E. I still haven't finished it. I remember starting watching it like literally years ago. I, I should really get back to it now that I know the entire series is cancelled which is kind of a waste but it was such a good show while it lasted. Once again, the casting was absolutely insane. But anyway, back to the builds. Moving on to the interior, I tried to give it more of a contemporary vibe, kind of a mix between, you know, modern and traditional furniture. And yeah, I really, really like the interiors actually. It's very spacious, which is probably, you know, not the most realistic thing, because I do know a lot of British homes tend to be a bit more, I wouldn't say crammed, but it's definitely not, you know, you're suburban house you'd find in like the midwest of the u.s where it's literally like infinite space okay right so i really want to quickly point out this nice little detail i included right here using that wire piece from debug i believe it came with the star wars pack i just really like that detail i don't know i've used that in one other build which was from last year if i'm not mistaken but i really really like that detail unfortunately that wire thing does block the sims path so if you use it make sure you put it somewhere where it doesn't block sims paths but yeah the living room really really spacious as i said i love the focal point with the fireplace and all of the decorative shelving and just to add a little bit more um detail i decided to add a, a feature wall a gray feature wall so you know it's not really a pop of color but it is it is something and over here in the dining room i used mostly traditional furniture and i really love this shelving setup that i did also one thing you will notice in this house is that i use quite a few boilers i guess i don't actually know how these work i have never seen any of these in real life because i live in a tropical country and it's not a thing that we use here but I have seen boilers in, you know, British homes because as I was researching this build, I guess, I actually looked at a lot of like property listings for like British homes and I noticed you guys um, tend to use um, boilers a lot. I just don't know where they're supposed to go, how many you're supposed to have. Somebody would probably enlighten me on that in the comments, but I know for a fact that Charlie's house in um, Heartstopper does have a boiler like in the main entrance so I made sure to put one there but yeah shout out to my British friends if I missed out on something please feel free to point it out because I'm pretty sure I did um, but yeah right now we're working on kind of like the modern extension area and it has a family room with a pretty large size TV and you know, I, I imagine that would be where they would have, you know, kind of like the, you know, movie nights and maybe like some gaming nights as well. 
we don't actually see much of Charlie's house, but Nick's house actually. We do see quite a bit of his living room and he does spend quite a lot of time with his mom, Queen Olivia Coleman. Can we take a second to appreciate her in that show? I'm like, I was shook. I was like properly shook when Olivia Coleman was in Heartstopper. I was like, oh my gosh, she is like so epic. I was not expecting her to be in it, but of course I was fanboying. I absolutely loved her in The Favourite and in The Crown and she's just Queen Olivia Coleman. Super super love it. And she has some pretty heartwarming moments as well with Kate Connor. So so cute. I just can't. Heartstopper is just so so good you guys. I just can't stop gushing about it. I don't know. I'm just such a sucker for BL. And yeah, it's weird because I feel like a lot of Western kind of like gay TV shows and movies aren't really called BL. I feel like at this point, BL is still very much an Asian thing. So I don't know what you guys would consider it in the West. Maybe more of like a coming of age. Yeah, I think it's more of a coming of age type show, which I also really enjoy as well. And with the knee, it's definitely more of a coming of age TV show. And I feel like we need more of it, to be honest. We need more of the wholesome coming of age shows. And also, hopefully one that has the same aesthetic as Anna with an E kiss. That show, hands down, is like visually the most gorgeous period drama ever. There, I said it. I don't care about the opulence of the crown and Downton Abbey, I just love the simplicity and natural beauty that is showcased in Anne with an E. And it's really, really sad that that series isn't getting a follow-up, but you know, it is what it is. It's times like these when I feel like Western actors and actresses should really follow the whole love team concept. Because I feel like, once again, that is more of an Asian concept where a lot of, you know, the successful couples in showbiz tend to get, you know, paired together in different, like, movies and TV shows. It's a thing that we do in my country. So when a couple does really, really well in terms of ratings for whatever show they're in, they would be given, you know, movie contracts and endorsement contracts and maybe two or three more TV shows that they're going to work on. So, you know, we get to see them play different characters, but they're still, you know, kind of like paired with each other. I don't know if that concept would fly though in the West, but I would so love for Joe Locke and Kit Connor to be in more movies, TV shows, and also uh, I forgot the name of the actors and actresses, but Anne and Gilbert, the actors that played them, please put them in more TV shows, please. I need to see more of them. But anyway, moving on to the bedroom. See, Master Bedroom, I kept it quite simple. You know, it follows generally the same style as the rest of the house, because I feel like that is more towards the parents' tastes. So yeah, really, really simple, nothing too, too crazy. This is the first of the teens' bedroom that we're going to be furnishing. So for this house, I did follow the whole setup of Charlie's family. So yeah, this is supposed to be quote unquote Charlie's room or alt Charlie's room. And there's also another bedroom for Tori, which is Charlie's sister. And yeah, I tried to somewhat follow some of the details, even though it's not exactly the same. I made sure to put Charlie's bed next to the window and then next to that there's like some shelves, tons of posters and we don't have a drum set in The Sims 4 which is such a bummer. It still blows my mind how we don't have bands in The Sims 4, let me just point that out, but drum sets would have been so perfect. But we do have some keyboards and that's the closest thing I could find to some sort of a large musical instrument so I just put that there. Let's just pretend this is alt charlie's bedroom okay so yeah there is one musical corner in this room and there's also a desk over here for them to do their homework um yeah really really nice i really like this room that's not usually a color that i would go with i really really like green though green is my favorite color but it's more of like the sage green not necessarily this i don't know this kind of looks sage green depends on the lighting though 
but this one does look a little bit more lime green-esque maybe like a really really pastel lime green but from this angle it does look more sage green so yeah moving on to tori's bedroom um i went for a more purple vibes is it purple or mauve yeah either one of those is fine but yeah once again i just made it feel like some teen's bedroom i guess i feel like i'm out of practice when it comes to family homes i don't usually do a lot of family homes actually um that's gonna change though uh, i definitely want to make more family homes in the future let me know if you want to see more of them but yeah, um, I actually don't know much about Tori's personality because we don't really see much of her in the show. She kind of just is there and she kind of just teleports <laughs> during scenes with Charlie. But she's really funny. I love her humor. And apparently she is an introvert and she also likes movies and she likes to blog on her laptop. So I made sure to take note of that and to incorporate those aspects of her personality in this bedroom. So I'm really, really happy about it. Okay, so this bedroom is also a little bit different in terms of the layout because it's a really, really long room. So I kind of had to split it into two with this bookshelf right here, which reminds me of something that you can get from Ikea. Because yeah, I've been spending quite a lot of time in Ikea right now because I'm shopping for furniture. Um, but yeah, that looks like one of the IKEA bookshelves that I see quite a lot of. Uh, but yeah, there is two parts to this room. There's one part there, there's one part where the bed is, and then there's the other part where the closet and the desk is. So yeah, pretty interesting layout, but I'm really, really happy with it. I'm really, really happy with how the bedrooms turned out. It did take me quite a lot of time to furnish the bedroom. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm so out of practice, but you know, I'm gonna get used to it eventually. Plus, the amount of detail you put into each teen bedroom's room is kind of justified because I feel like it really shows their personality anyway, so I didn't mind, you know, spending more time on the teen's bedroom. By the way, speaking of that, I'm so tempted to make, like, a house inspired by Nick's house. So if you guys would like to see it, please let me know because Nick does live in a different type of house. He lives in a detached house. By the way, if you guys don't know the difference, um, semi-detached home is basically a townhouse but the houses are connected by one wall. So the neighbors share one wall. I don't actually know if there's a practical purpose for that. Maybe it saves on cost. But I did research a little bit about the history of semi-detached homes in the UK and apparently at some point the most common type of housing that was built in the UK at some point were semi-detached homes. Apparently that is changing now. Apparently things are changing so that's pretty interesting. But yeah, I love the landscaping in front actually. I think I prefer it more to the landscaping out back because I wasn't really sure what to do over here out back. But yeah, both homes have garages. Um, still can't get over the fact that we don't have cars in The Sims 4. I've heard some rumors that The Sims 5 is like under development or something. <sighs> I'm losing hope, you guys. I'm losing hope that we're gonna get cars in The Sims 4, but hoping that Sims 5 would have cars at least, because that would be so awesome. But this is the backyard. I feel like normally British homes would have really, really long backyards. Like, they would go all the way out. Unfortunately, this lot didn't really give me much space for that, so we have a pretty long and wide backyard, I guess. There's also a little shed over there where I threw in some tools, and there's also like a cardboard box. It's one of those cardboard box items that came with Eco Lifestyle. And then there's also a little barbecue area over here as well as some areas to hang out outside as well but it looks like that is going to be it for this build as per usual i just want to say thank you to all of you for all of your support and a special thank you to all of my amazing patrons but with that being said i'm gonna go now thank you so much for watching you all have an awesome 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 day enjoy the rest of the video and i will see you guys next time bye bye